All right, I uh, guess we'll get started if everyone's ready. So uh, initially this lecture was going to be uh, just about move order, but uh, as I was trying to make that lecture, I found that it's really hard to uh, make a move order lecture outside of the context of a game. So uh, what I hope to do with this lecture is uh, this game I particularly like. This uh, game I particularly liked because uh, I thought that it had a lot of very interesting move order parts. Um, in addition, this is a game that uh, uh, Yisato himself, uh, he basically uh, self-reviewed his own game. So we get to hear, uh, or we get to see some of uh, his own variants and commentary on uh, what he did right and uh, he did wrong in uh, his own game. Yeah, they're really interesting books. Uh, they're uh, pretty new. So I particularly enjoyed them. Uh, needless to say, I do not have. Uh, needless to say, I uh, do not have the skill myself to uh, say, "Oh, look, that professional made a mistake." So uh, uh, it's uh, definitely nice to have. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely nice to have uh, their own commentary. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, uh, hope that uh, you guys like this game. This is probably. In the top five professional games for me, this was uh, quite possibly the game where uh, uh, Yisato came out and uh, essentially announced himself on uh, the national and inter international scene as a uh, world-class player. Well, we, we can we can have all sorts of uh, debates now about uh, more recent games, but uh, at this time, uh, you know, uh, Lee Chang Ho was uh, one of the uh, strongest players. Out there, of course, and uh, this was uh, one of uh, Yisitol's uh, great games against him. So, with uh, that being said, let's uh, get started into the game. As soon as my computer figures out how not to lag. So the uh, game started off pretty simply enough. Uh, Yisato went and uh, made himself a mini Chinese framework on the left, which I'm sure some of you are uh, probably familiar with. Um, this is pretty common these days. Still is common, actually. was back then and still is. No, it's, uh, it's a good opening. It uh, tries to use the strong points of... Uh, the Chinese opening. Yeah, micro is interesting too. We could uh, we could go into a whole uh, interesting lecture on uh, the variants that you can do with micro. But uh, suffice to say, it's a pretty standard opening. Uh, Yi Chang Ho uh, decides to uh, invade right into the top. <laughs> now I have a question. Why do you think he chose uh, L17? Any ideas? Why do you think he chose uh, L7? Well, certainly you can make a, an extension on both sides, but uh, maybe why, why not K17? Any uh, any particular ideas? Right, well, so the idea here is, uh, in general, we, we know that Black usually wants to enclose his, his uh, R16 corner with a move. And the idea being is that we want to give White as much space as possible on the upper left after Black encloses his uh, top right corner. So, uh, per expectation, Black, uh, Black does enclose. Uh, notice he doesn't play a move like N17, of course, because that would still leave up an uh, invasion at... Uh, P17. Um, as for the choice of uh, O17 versus P17, that's, uh, it's difficult to necessarily say which one is always superior. In this case, uh, uh, Yusitol said that uh, he wanted to uh, increase the pressure on White Stone. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, at this point you could say it's more stylistic. He wanted to increase the pressure on White Stone, and so lo and behold, White makes a very calm response. And uh, this next move actually. This next move I found very interesting. Um, it's a pretty standard move, but it's not a move that might uh, occur to everyone intuitively. 
and yet it's undeniably a monstrous, monstrous move. Any ideas? What do you guys think? What is uh, Black's next movie? I mean, there's a lot of potential choices, but locally, when we're talking locally, what is Black's next move? So no, no Tanukis. So let's see, one choice for E12, D15, G16, J17. Wow, J17, that's an interesting one. Upper left quadrant of the board. <laughs> ah, red. There you go. You got it right. Yes. Yisitol's move is F17. And this may surprise some people because uh, it's only a little one space extension, but. Uh, that kind of masks just how large a move it is. Um, so this move has a lot of uh, meaning behind it. First of all, of course, <laughs> so first of all, of course, this puts more pressure on white stones. It's actually basically sente. I, I would consider this move very, very close to uh, absolute sente. In this game, it was sente. So uh, this does a lot. Not only does it pressure white, not only is it sente, but it's also, I guess, what you could call a, uh, a partial defense uh, for his corner. You know, the standard corner enclosure, of course, is d15. But if black just goes and plays d15 right now, then white says, oh, okay, that's nice. And then white plays, you know, anything else he wants on the board. It, it puts almost zero pressure on white stones. So black's corner looks nice, but it, it's 100% gote. And a move like r10 is just gigantic. So uh, he decided to play f17, and he says this is a very common opening, or at least uh, especially at this time. Uh, so uh, yeah, moves like this actually are played sometimes. Uh, sometimes moves like this are played. Usually white stone is one space closer when this happens, but this is done sometimes. Um, I would take a shot and say that this might have just been more of a stylistic choice. But uh, yeah, perhaps with uh, C11 being low, he didn't like it. That, that would be my guess. I cannot tell you this categorically. He doesn't particularly say. Yeah, so the idea here is that this is Sente, and uh, it helps Black's corner. So lo and behold, uh, white responds. And so here's the question. Why is it such a sente move? What can black do? What if white plays somewhere else? What can uh, what can black do about it? Well, okay, keep it low is a good idea, but what specific technique? We're looking at specific moves, specific sequence of moves. Ah, K16. It's a good idea. Yep, K16 is the basic idea here. Now, if you like, uh, if you like G16, oh, uh oh, is the audio working? Hello, everyone can hear me. Yes, maybe. Okay. Okay. So this is the basic sequence, and this is the reason why white generally responds to a move like this. So this is like G6, this is like G16 plus. Hey, John boy. Yep. So this is uh, the basic idea why white responds, because this is looking really, really nice for black. So uh, Li Cheng Ho responds, and you know there, there's no mistakes yet. It's still very, very early in the opening. And now Black has a number of choices that uh, he could choose to play here. Um, the one that he chose is uh, decided to make his uh, lower side more solid. Now, the reasoning for this, you know, th there's a lot of ideas that, uh, that Black could consider here. Instead of this, you know, one choice is uh, Black could make this very, very common peep and just leave it as Aji. Uh, for example, to play uh, one and then solidify with three, 
And this is one technique that uh, Isatol says is playable, actually. He says that you, you can play this way if you want. It's more of a stylistic matter. Later on, uh, Black has ideas that he can do with uh, K18. But uh, yeah, this is an uh, entirely different game. And uh, the reason he didn't play the uh, J16 is he actually has an idea for uh, what to do here with that peep. Uh, rather than peep, he has uh, another idea to uh, build a moyo. And I just got disconnected. Oops. Oops, that wasn't fun. I do not like this internet connection. All right, so uh, continuing on. So he has a different plan. Now we're, we're gonna take a look at it in, in a moment. So black plays a, a pretty standard move here. Now the idea, so of course this is trying to make some territory on uh, the left side, but the idea behind it is uh, it's harder for uh, white to go in there. <laughs> so remember, we're looking at uh, the fact that Black has made this exchange already. So after Black does this and uh, solidifies himself like this, it's not that easy for White to find a great invasion move on uh, the left side because you know normally an approach move you might make, <clears throat> you know a basic approach move you might make maybe isn't as good as it might normally be because Black started to defend his corner with uh, F17. So uh, black is uh, building up his uh, left side. And Li Chang Ho actually decides to totally tanuki and uh, play elsewhere. And uh, Yisrael goes into a, a wide variety of uh, variations here. Um, R6, yeah, R, it's, that's his style. He's a very, very calm player. And this is, of course, a gigantic move because black has this really, really nice corner here. And he would love to make an extension along the bottom, maybe approach at R6 and then make a moyo with uh, Q10. He'd love to do that. But uh, R6 neatly prevents that. Um, there's actually a variety of other moves that uh, Yusitul talks about that uh, you could consider as white. Um, one of the main ones that he looks at is this one. And uh, the idea being that even though the black is reinforced, you can uh, still manage to attack his corner to an extent. So uh, black will uh, usually kick, which is almost the only move here. And now white has uh, an important uh, shape move. What is uh, what is white's shape move? Anyone? Uh, e16, there you go. Yes. Very good shape move. Yeah, playing d15 is uh, pretty slow. So the basic response is for black to just uh, connect there. Uh, white then plays uh, b16, black responds, and then white plays flexibly here. Now, uh, a small point that I want to note here, but also important, uh, an important one, and uh, one you could consider move order, is that uh, white does not play d16 here. Now, many amateurs, uh, many Don players, and oftentimes myself included, will play d16 almost as an afterthought, uh, instantly after playing uh, b16. Yet, it's not always a great move to play. Sometimes it is, but oftentimes it's not. What, uh, why might uh, white not play d16 here? Right, so the, the key here is, uh, well, yes, there's co-threats, but, uh, you know, later on in the game, if white manages to obtain b15, if white manages to obtain b15 here, there's a lot more Aji in the corner that uh, white can play with, and depending what white builds around this uh, g18 area, white might even be able, in some circumstances, to attach here. And depending on the board position and what's going on, maybe he could make a seki inside, or ko, or th there's... There's a lot of Aji that's possible here, and you lose all of it when you play d16. So white should only play d16 if he absolutely has to. So uh, he chooses not to play it. Well, he says that uh, were this to happen, white would not play it. So black can actually be more aggressive in response to this move. 
One idea for black is to actually go like this. This is bad for white. White should not do this. This is uh, going to be very, very painful for white. He's made himself into a very unreasonable fight. Even if white manages to run out, black is just going to play like this. And white is totally dominated. Any minor gain that white can get by attacking f17 is totally negated. Yeah, this would, uh, no professional would ever play this as, as white. But white has other responses. So uh, d15 might almost seem uh, instinctual at this point, but another great move is actually to just totally tanuki against it. And then uh, when black pushes through white's shape, uh, white can push right back. And this is actually a, I won't call it a standard variance, but this has actually occurred in uh, professional games in the past. Uh, this sequence of moves. So this can uh, definitely be considered. Uh, one idea that uh, White can play with. Yeah, Tanuki War, basically. They make a trade. So, uh, yeah, uh, C15 is one variant that uh, White can consider. But uh, Yi Cheng Ho's style is uh, very solid and slow. And he chooses to just nullify anything, that, or a lot, that Black can make on uh, the right side, basically ruining it. And now Black shows why he didn't play the normal move of uh, J16 with his next move. Black plays a uh, expansive move, basically making his intentions clear that he wants the whole upper left for himself. Now, had Black made this exchange, had Black made this exchange, yeah, exactly. With D8, it's a uh, it's, uh, better move. Had Black made this exchange right, this allows White to cut much easier. And it makes G4, uh, G14 into a very stupid move. So he didn't make that exchange because he wanted to be able to do this. Um, and there's all sorts of things that uh, Black can uh, uh, consider elsewhere. <laughs> uh, as soon as I figure it out, I will uh, let you know. So this is one move. Actually, there are other ideas as well. Black can still play this move. And if uh, white takes this move, if white just defends solidly, black is more than happy to uh, develop what's left of uh, the right side. The right side's big enough. And this is the variation that uh, he shows as uh, what black can also consider. And now black is aiming for the odd G at uh, K18 <clears throat> later on. Now, interestingly, if white goes here, I see a lot of players actually make this mistake, and they don't know how to use black stone after white plays here. So what, is, uh, what does black do with his stone once white plays here? Well, so the key here is you only want to use h16 when the latter is good for you. Yeah, tanuki. But, uh, the, so the tanuki here that black should do is interesting. Black takes a ladder breaker, which also develops his position, which is a, a pretty good idea. Now, uh, in, now this, this next part is pretty interesting, actually. Uh, according to uh, Yusatol, the proper move for white here is actually to respond locally and uh, play like this. And this is playable for both sides. It's a very slow move, but uh, he says it's proper. Now, uh, what most players, myself included, would probably consider is this move, which looks really nice. Yeah, this, this looks like a really nice move, but the problem with it is... What uh, white will generally do is like this, because white does not have the ladder. And so black will first weaken the shape, and then cut. And then do this. And black is pretty happy with this. I mean, sure, white has uh, gotten R9, which really hurts the right side, but black has really helped develop his own uh, upper left a lot. 
Yeah, black uh, or white uh, cannot be particularly thrilled with this case. Uh, black black's position is a pleasure. So these are a lot of other variants, but uh, Yusufal decides that uh, Yusufal decides that uh, he wants uh, Moyo for himself. And uh, if White just plays, you know, a normal pushing move like this, this is this is probably not a good idea because Black is just, you know, more than happy to play out like this, and now it's almost solid territory. This is uh, absurd for White. Yeah, horrific. Absurd. <laughs> Seventh line, yeah. Kind of bad. So white needs to uh, make uh, something in there, at least. And uh, Yi Chang Ho's choice is interesting, I thought. He plays uh, C16, which uh, normally doesn't occur to uh, most players when doing something like this. But uh, the idea behind this move is that he can't really play a normal approach like uh, C15, right? It, it's more of a forcing move rather than trying to start a Joseki sequence. Because of uh, F17 and G14, uh, White does not want to start a regular Joseki. He just wants to make Savaki and make a uh, flexible shape. So that, that's the idea. So Black just plays a, a very simple move. And now, uh, what do you think White should do? White is trying to uh, lightly uh, destroy his area. Ah. C12, E14, D12. All interesting ideas. Uh, Yi Chang Ho's idea, actually, is a simple two-space extension. Now, the idea being, if uh, Black plays a move like this, that uh, white is going to either you know make some sort of co, and it's pretty hard to uh, kill this entirely. There's just so much Aji to get out. Uh, black probably won't start the co just yet, but uh, it's really hard to kill this white group entirely. It's a little thin on the outside, so this probably isn't ideal for black. But uh, he said that uh, yeah, he said that uh, his next move seemed to surprise uh, Yi Chang Ho a little bit. In its, uh, in its, uh, I guess, slowness, you would call it. He just uh, rips out the base from it with uh, B16, which is a bit slow. But uh, Yi Zhengho didn't expect it because he actually had a strategy. And uh, Yusuf Tol said that uh, he was actually surprised by White's next move. He uh, hadn't considered it, really. And that uh, White was able to get a... Uh, White was uh, able to potentially get something good from it. So what do you guys think? What is uh, what do you guys think White next White's next move is that surprised uh, you at all? Tanuki, yes, always. Yeah. So uh, this is the type of move that I probably wouldn't see anytime soon, but it's a really interesting move, I thought, and it's a really it's a simple move actually. It's uh, just a cap, and it's uh, the reading behind it that makes it such a good move here. Let's uh, let's see why it's such a good move. So let's say, of course, Black tries to uh, do the standard idea. Well, you know, Black's just going to uh, slice White in half. What does White do about it? Uh, not quite B10. Mm, not quite F13. Those are all possibilities for later, but there's one move that he should do just right now because it just has so much potential. Ah, C10, there we go. The shape vital point. This is uh, kind of frustrating for Black to uh, deal with. If uh, Black goes for the uh, cut through like this, Normally, this isn't very good for white, but in this case, uh, this is uh, sufficient for white. Yeah, black's, uh, black's bottom left position kind of collapses in this case. Yeah, big exchange. So, uh, 
So this is uh, this is unacceptable for Black, according to uh, Yusitol. So he said basically that he could not find uh, an assertive way to deal with this move. He, he said that he simply could not find a, a powerful counterattack for it. So he just uh, defended solidly at c9, which I found uh, pretty defensive. But he, he basically said that, uh, you know, I, I found no great counter for it. D13. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If black goes d13. Oh, um, uh, I guess you could do c10 still. Um, the other idea that occurs is, uh, this idea occurs to me. I can't tell you for sure if this is the right idea or not. But uh, it seems uh, potentially possible. I don't really think that black gets enough compensation. So uh, I can't tell you for certain that this is why he didn't do it. But uh, this occurs to me as uh, it's kind of hard to use that wall. And also you're attaching a weak stone. You know, you, you really don't want to attach to weak stones. So, uh, uh, Yusufal basically decides that he's just going to defend very solidly and wait to see what white will do and then use this solid shape to uh, attempt to uh, cut white up. But uh, now, uh, according to Yusufal at least, now uh, Yi Cheng Ho makes a, a big mistake, or at least a, a modest sized mistake, which uh, ended up hurting him. He decides to uh, save some of his stones. Why defend at c9? Why not uh, d10 instead? Ah, so that's actually a very good question. So, uh, black could certainly do this, and this would gain black uh, potentially maybe two or three more points. But uh, I guess the problem with this is that uh, white has more forcing moves that uh, he can play against this. Uh, for one thing, uh, later on in the game, uh, there's moves like this, which uh, suddenly a uh, move at uh, c9 appears as a uh, potential invasion. So you gain a few points, but uh, you also increase white's forcing moves on the outside. So black just defends, and now, uh, according to Yi Sitol, uh, Yi Cheng Ho makes uh, his first mistake of the game. Basically, uh, white goes to save his stones here. But uh, the problem is he's ignoring his uh, e11 move. So we played out a few moves. This is a pretty uh, standard sequence. There really isn't that much variation. And white manages to uh, connect out like this. No, not e13. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that one in a second. So uh, this certainly uh, looks like a fighty response, but uh, the problem at the end of this, you know, uh, at uh, the very end of this, white can connect out of stones, but uh, what move does black have here? Any ideas? Very, very simple move. There, there's nothing complicated about it. It's local. It's a simple move. Yeah, E13. E13. Very, very, very simple. And suddenly, uh, E11 doesn't look like that useful a stone anymore. And, uh, you know, white has maybe saved a few of his stones, but uh, black is uh, apparently pretty satisfied with uh, this result. So... Then uh, the question comes down to uh, what should uh, Yi Cheng Ho have done? So going back to here, he says that, uh, well, actually, let's see if uh, anyone has any ideas. So something local, definitely, in the upper left. Wei needs to do something to save his stones, 
or say part of his stones, but what? E16, F16. Oh, who suggested F16? Excellent. Yeah, so uh, he told actually says that uh, white should have gone here because the C16 and stone itself isn't necessarily that important. But the idea here is that you want to separate the potentially thin G14 and use white's E11 stone to help attack that. Also, you want to strengthen the uh, H17 stone in the process. So there's a lot of interesting variants that can occur here. If black just responds passively, white's just going to move out here. And this is unacceptable for black. White is thrilled. I mean, uh, the, the G14 stone just does not look very useful. No, not almost the same as in the, this. Oh. Mm, no, I think uh, it's the, the, the big difference here is that black hasn't really built up as much. So if black attempts to do something like this, this is a much thinner move than uh, it might have been. Because of those exchanges around uh, B15 that haven't been done, this is still very thin. So uh, I would not call it uh, the same. But, uh, yeah, not exactly great for black. What black should actually do in this case is uh, attempt to uh, strongly counterattack. Uh, E15 is a little bit passive. You're basically uh, giving up a, a chunk of the stones to white. Also, my problem with this is... Uh, this is, I guess, my problem with doing this. And this doesn't seem very fun for black. The clamp isn't a terrible idea, but uh, it's not uh, aggressive, the type of aggression that uh, black really needs to do here. Yeah, G16, there you go. This is uh, Yisatol style. So uh, he says that uh, black has to go here when uh, white goes there and start off a very, very complicated fight. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's not nice. Don't say that. So, uh, if when attempts to resist like this, this might look nice at first glance, but uh, this is not ideal for white. Because even if the white can get this, yeah, white's shape is uh, cut into all types of pieces. And uh, not apparently not what white wants. But what has other ideas? White well, can actually uh, cut out here and now uh, start a very interesting fight. And black can respond aggressively, but now white has a really interesting move. Now that black has thrown, this is this is a, a good point to look in in terms of uh, you know throwing in a second stone. There's what's that proverb about throwing in the extra stone? Um, but yeah, so white is thrown in, in an extra stone, and even though black can likely capture it, depending on what white does, uh, white has given himself an extra liberty by throwing in that extra stone, and that extra liberty lets white do a lot. So if, for example, white does the same cut, but after throwing in another stone, this is uh, very different, because white's likely going to be able to get an uh, entire extra forcing move on the outside. If, uh, yeah, exactly, black can't break the shape anymore. That extra liberty is doing a huge amount of good for white. So if black just plays simply, if black just goes to take some territory, this is a pretty basic sequence. If black just says, I'm going to take this territory, this is uh According to uh, Yusatol, this is uh, sufficient. Yeah, white is happy enough with uh, this kind of result. And while black has taken the territory, white is suddenly vastly stronger on the outside. So 
So what can actually happen is uh, all sorts of complicated things. What Black should do here is actually not even worry about uh, the one stone, but instead just go here and uh, concentrate on slicing through White's shape. And now a really, really complicated fight starts. Yeah, lots of fighting spirit. White can now increase his liberties and use his C13 stone. Black doesn't H16 first. Um, no, I don't think he would. White doesn't necessarily have to play uh, J16. White could uh, consider uh, this move, I suppose. This seems uh, potentially pretty dangerous for Black. Yeah, I, I, I don't really like this position for Black that much. Mm, seems uh, complicated for Black. This is interesting. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, seems difficult. Seems difficult. So, his, his, anyway, his suggestion is not to do that. To just play G17. And then, uh, black can, uh, work hard to keep white separated. And white can suddenly start to, uh, attempt to build some eyes. And with this variation, what we're looking at is, you know, these two moves that White, are play, that White just played, they're having a great effect. They are doing a lot of good for White. They are helping him in this fight. So with this strategy, White is uh, effectively helping out his stones. And there's a lot of variations that can come from here. But uh, I want to try and get through the rest of the game without taking uh, eight hours. So suffice to say, uh, a lot of complicated fighting can uh, keep on going from here that uh, the players could consider doing. If we have time at the very end, I suppose we can come back to this, but uh, there's a lot more of the game to get through. So, as we talked about, this is, uh, according to Yisitol, not the ideal strategy for white to do. Because black is very happy to get this. And uh, white chooses uh, L3 to... Uh, finish up his shape, or at least to uh, develop his bottom side, because uh, the, r the right side isn't necessarily that interesting anymore, because white already has uh, R6, so it is uh, not as developable, developable as it could be. But regardless, it's the biggest side remaining, so black ends up taking uh, R10, pretty standard move. Although he says later, actually, that uh, black should probably settle for a slightly different move. That uh, rather than the game variant, black would uh, likely be better off had he played... Uh, what's the move? One point closer. But a uh, small point. But this move, this move was uh, probably my favorite one in the game. And he says that uh, this was perhaps uh, White's most brilliant move of the game. And uh, he goes into a lot of detail, actually. He spends about 20 pages going into why this is uh, such a great move. And why the vast majority of players, would, uh, myself included, would likely never ever find it. So uh, let's see a few other moves that uh, White might consider instead of this move. Yeah, you're right, ending move. <laughs> Not that good. So let's say, what if White considers uh, this move to uh, attempt to bring out his stone and threaten the cutting point? What do you guys think about this move? Good, bad, ugly, potentially good, maybe bad. Crude, what, what's your black do about it? What, what's your black do about it? Okay, how should he say solid? <laughs> Thank you, Frozen, for your enlightened commentary. Ah, G13, yes. That's actually the move he suggests for Black to take. 
and then once white pushes out, uh, black just goes here. And uh, he says that this is uh, not a fun position for white to be in because uh, white's top group is not 100% alive yet. And it's hard to say that uh, white's G12 wall will necessarily give him a solid gain in the center, especially because black is so solid. With uh, playing so slowly with the C9, really he just made black absolutely solid on the left side. So this is probably not the best idea. Let's uh, look at, uh, what about the other side? What if uh, white makes a nice jump like this? This is a, this is a very normal idea, but uh, it's still not necessarily good enough. The problem is uh, all black needs to do here is just play very, very simply with uh, h12. And the problem now is uh, white's shape is still a little bit thin. First of all, there's still a cutting point here. And then there's a great peep right here, that, uh, or a great cap that leads up with, that uh, can lead into the peep at uh, J16. So this position uh, is not happy for white. And if white just pushes black, black is more than happy to just make more points. Well, no good follow-ups, right? So that also isn't a good enough idea. So with white's move here, he basically uh, prevents both of those. Now. Despite that, he's basically playing, uh, I guess, lighter with both stones, but it's also a little bit thinner. So black tries to uh, naturally cut white in half. And then white just plays very, very plain and simple moves. <clears throat> he just, oh, uh, loves to play nice and simple. He just extends, and then hanes, and then extends. And now suddenly, from, uh, you know, we, we said before that, uh, well, maybe white's group could be attacked. You know, maybe it was a little bit thin, but uh, it's, uh, he says it's uh, almost impossible to uh, attack white here. Well, black actually finishes off by uh, stopping the cutting point because he can't deal with that. And this is the game from here. And uh, he still says that uh, this was a fine position for white and that he used uh, the H12 stone as a very solid, cut as a solid uh, sacrifice strategy. Because it still has Aji to escape, and it's also allowed White to become uh, much stronger and incentive. So, uh, there's actually some other moves that Black could consider. Instead of this, what happens if Black goes to slice directly? Instead of pushing, what if Black just plays here? That's a, a difficult question, actually, to find the right answer to. So what White has to do is uh, cut, but which cut? It's very cutty, but the question is you have to choose which cut very carefully. Mm, H14 is hard to make work. The problem with H14 is... Black's just going to give up the one stone. The reason why black can't probably can't do this is that white can cut like this. Now, white's actually going to sacrifice his stones because after black gets this, he's threatening a double Atari. And then white manages to end like this. And though black gained a good chunk of points, white is uh, pretty happy with uh, taking this result. Yeah, well, white's outside is uh, pretty fine. So uh, this is very playable for white. So Yusufil decides to just uh, simply go with the cut through here. But now, uh, according to him, uh, White makes himself a big mistake, and he says this was probably the uh, game-losing move for White. Even though it looks good at first glance, it's actually uh, the game-losing move. So uh, White needs to do something with his stones and to uh, treat them lightly. But uh, the question is, how should he treat them lightly?
H10. Ah, well, that's actually his move. Yeah, so H10 is actually a Yi, Yi Chang Ho's move. But uh, apparently this is uh, not good enough. Because it looks like it's light shape. But uh, black has a very, very severe follow-up. And if you can find what to do here is black, you're a pretty strong player. See, I actually meant to see one of the moves, but uh, I didn't see the, uh, the the setup move first. Black actually has to do a setup move first, which is very important. So black wants to severely attack this group. Because this group is surrounded by black thickness. And white is essentially trying to steal all of black's territory. So h8. Um... You know, H8 looks nice, but uh, the problem with it is this. And black really has nothing to attack after this. After white does this, there's really nothing black can do to attack this group. I mean, black white just escapes like this, and then, you know, <laughs> he's just out. There's actually a much more severe move. So the move that I, when I was looking through this game, the move that I thought that black should play is... Uh, more, no, no, more severe, is uh, J9, which is a very fun ceiling move. But uh, my problem is I didn't set it up properly. It doesn't work yet. White can uh, rip the shape in half, and there's not much that black can do about it. The problem is white can do this. And if black attempts to seal him in, white wins the fight here. Because... White gets a snapback. It's pretty funny. See, I kind of I, see. I miss this variant, which is uh, why I'm very, very far from a professional player. So uh, J9 is the right idea, but you have to set it up first. So uh, the setup move. Any ideas? What does uh, the setup move? Ah, bingo. Yes. This is a very powerful setup move. It's not something that white can ignore. If white just jumps out again, black's just going to take this. And this is this is horrifying. Far too painful to even imagine for uh, white to consider tolerating. The game ends here. He should just resign. So white is very, very happy, actually, to get this jump. Because this jump is very, very big. So black feels a little bit bad. He said that uh, he said to us that at the time he uh, felt bad about playing L13 because uh, white N14 is such a gigantic move. But uh, because you can launch such a severe attack, it's uh, actually acceptable for black. So now black takes the move, and now if white attempts the same exact thing, let's see what happens now. Not just snapback. There's not even a cut, or at least not uh, not as severely cut. And white is in a horrible and severe danger here. Not uh, entirely pleasant. So white now has to do something to break out with his stones. So instead of cutting, white actually does. Uh, Hane out here, which is which is a uh, interesting idea because black's shape is uh, still not perfect. So what do you guys think? What is uh, what is uh, white planning on doing? Ah, uh, can't black just do uh, L10 now? Well, black could do L10 now, but uh, this is different because they haven't made that exchange. Remember uh, this exchange. And they also haven't made this exchange. So this is a different position. Black is uh, not as strong at all as uh, he was in terms of his shape. 
So Black actually decides to make an exchange. And uh, Isto goes uh, right for the cut. And he says that uh, he was very satisfied with uh, his result. And uh, White can manage to uh, ladder out with his stones. And at first glance, this looks like White is happy. But uh, the problem comes here. What is, uh, what is Black's next move? Any ideas? It looks like white is pretty strong, but is he? Also, K4 is done a little bit later, but you need to set up first. Exactly. You have to set up first. K7 is uh, the severe move. And this is uh, really messing with white, because if we look at the, the basic direction of the stones, the flow of the stones is that both sides are going to move down, and it looks like black is going to end up uh, damaging white's bottom in the process of white escaping. Uh, he, he made a, a kind of a funny comment. He says that uh, many amateurs might uh, consider L7 here, but uh, this move would uh, not even occur to a professional player as a possibility. Because white will just respond here, and uh, white is uh, much too happy. Apparently we would, according to him. <laughs> so uh, the question now is, White's next move is a very interesting shape move. Any ideas what White should play here? Obviously White has to do something to connect his stones, but it's a very interesting little shape move. Ah, good, you, thought, you saw it. Yes, this is a very creative shape move. Um, normally, we want to avoid moves that are basically pre-peeped, but the idea here is that black can't cut, or at least can't cut very easily, because uh, white shape is too strong. So black has no choice but to do something else. Another idea for white to consider, actually, is uh, the direct counterattack. And this is, uh, uh, he still says that uh, this is a very vicious way for white to play, but uh, it's probably an overplay because white is simply too weak in uh, the center to fight properly. Yeah, this is, uh, he says this would be a desperate play for white. And uh, this is just uh, very hard, harder for white than it probably is for black because black is so thick. Yeah, and white's bottom will probably disappear in the process. So white ends up defending here. And black's next move is important. Someone already mentioned it. Any ideas? Yes, K4. It's very important now. Rather than uh, just pushing, black is treating uh, K7 lightly. And if white lets him take uh, K6 later, then black will be happy. Or if uh, white lets him uh, attack uh, L3, black will be happy. Basically, either way, black is happy here. But nevertheless, white still has to do something to uh, defend his group. So white plays a pretty simple move. He goes to just uh, cut off black stone. But now, uh, white is uh, tanuki against uh, black's shoulder hit. So what does uh, Black have to do now? Nothing complicated. Simple move. What does Black have to do? Any ideas? Yeah, very, very simple. Just get out of there. Now, uh, Yusufel ends up pushing twice. He says the second push at uh, M4 helps out White uh, a good chunk in the corner, but it's necessary for what he's planning in terms of his shape. So what makes himself a uh, fair amount more solid on the bottom, but it's uh, for a plan, I guess you could say. And now, uh, yeah, it's uh, not exactly pleasant, but uh, Black has an idea to use to attack White's group. 
And the idea is this cutting point still exists. And so Black wants to utilize this cutting point to uh, greatest effect. So what does he do now? Just a very simple move. He pulls back. And of course, uh, the ideal that white would want here is for, or the ideal that black wants here for, is for white to connect and then let black connect up. Ah, he is aiming for whatever white will allow him to do. He's not particular. I don't think he's particularly picky right now. If white will let him gain great benefit on the bottom left, then he can attack the bottom left. If white's going to let him get a great center, he'll get a great center. Whichever one lets him win. So White, of course, isn't going to take this uh, lying down. He starts a fight. White basically has no choice at this point because uh, he's behind a bit. So White pushes and goes directly for the cut. And this starts off uh, one of the main fights of the game. And this basically uh, decides who's going to win and lose. So let's uh, we're gonna take a little bit of time here. So there's a variety of moves that... Uh, White can consider here. Uh, any ideas what uh, Black should do at this point? White's clearly intent on uh, cutting him. Uh, which extent? You mean to uh, N6? Yeah, this uh, this still seems difficult, I think, for uh, Black to manage properly. Black still seems kind of floaty. And uh, the important point about this cut is, or the important point about this stone is that Black can't cut white right now. What I mean is Black can't do this because this is suicide. So since the cutting point is protected, all black, all white has to worry about is his, uh, his M7 stone. L8. Ah, so L8 isn't a bad idea, but you have to set up first. This is a classic, uh, classic uh, technique. What should black, uh, what should black do to uh, set up before he plays uh, L8? Yes, there you go. I hope you found that one. Yeah, so most of the Don players watching should be uh, familiar with this technique. Basically, you Atari at once and then threaten to ladder and or net the stones while fixing your cutting point. And so this, uh, lo and behold, is what happened in the game. So White needs to do something now, of course, because uh, he's in danger of being cut again. And he also has to worry about his two outside stones. And he has to do something about Black's three inside stones. So White is pretty busy right now. But uh, White has really no choice but to uh, go for the cut here. And try and get some sort of benefit. If uh, nothing else. So Black's response is pretty basic. And White cuts through. And now Black's next move. I want to focus on this. is going back to... Uh, the topic of uh, move order. Black plays a uh, important move order sequence here, which uh, really helps him out in uh, the fighting to come, in terms of uh, increasing the Aji. So uh, the classic idea that might occur is that uh, Black should directly come through. But uh, this isn't the ideal sequence. Because even though Black can do this and it's nice, White ends with H4. And uh, H4 is very good for White, because it fixes his cutting point, it uh, connects up his stones, and Black still needs to play more moves to live on the bottom. Meanwhile, White will, in all likelihood, get Sente to play N8. And that N8 move is just too gigantic. So this is uh, probably insufficient for uh, Black to consider. But if Black does proper setup first... Why black no g4? When? When should black g4? Right now? Mm, I suppose he could. Uh, 
I don't think I like this move very much. Yeah, I, I think the stones are in danger. This just seems like too gigantic a move for a white to take. I mean, what's black going to do this? There's no way black can do this to cut him off. So white is basically connected. And he's just made a lot of territory. Oh, you mean go for the, literally go for the direct cut. Oh, hmm, it's a possibility. Um, I'm sure there's a reason why. Maybe if he uh, starts off here. If you start off here first, uh, it doesn't seem that easy a fight for black. He does cut off a J7. That's the important thing. He cuts J7 right now because it's a very important cut. In terms of move order, it does a lot of Aji. So yes, you're right, that's what he does. <laughs> so this sets up uh, a lot of Aji for black. And it's very important to do this move order now before you make any exchanges with N4 because you don't know what white's going to do here. So white just plays very simply. Uh, some, uh, cost consistent with uh, Yi Cheng Ho style. And now that this has happened, now black goes through and cuts here. Now that he's made this exchange. And this is very important because it's essentially gained black an additional move. Rather than, uh, because white now needs to spend another move uh, defending himself. Like this. But notice he can't play h4 anymore. H4 that he played before, which was such a pretty shape, still leaves a nasty amount of Aji. So uh, he can't really do H4. But because he has to play H5, as Rukus was saying, this actually leaves a good chunk of Aji left over. At G4, he says that uh, because of the, the G4 Aji that's left, this still isn't 100% uh, solid territory for white, even after this. So good ideas, Rukus. Just uh, move order. <laughs> now, white here also takes an uh, important move order move. So, my question is, white just plays a single move at uh, n8. White doesn't have time to capture black stones. So, why, should, why would white make this single exchange here, knowing that he can't capture black stones? Oh, right, he had a liberty shortage. The idea here is that now black cannot capture white's three stones in a single move. White has essentially forced black to spend an additional move to capture these stones, which is very important, especially if you're in a, a complicated fight. So uh, white just plays very simply and does h5. And uh, now black has a, a very, very good move in terms of uh, proper shape. So. What, is, uh, what does black need to do here for his uh, five stones? What, what's the basic idea that black needs to do? No, 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 not, not specific moves, but uh, what con right, right, live. Live. What is uh, the simplest path to living, just conceptually, in this case? What's uh, the, the simple idea for living here? Well, connecting, can you connect out? If connecting is possible, I'm sure it'd be great, but I don't think you can. So, right, get two eyes. And how should we get two eyes in here? What, what weak white group might we consider? Yeah, do something to attack M3. So, now the question is how? How do we attack those three stones? There's all sorts of moves. Ah, how do, how do you cut them off and take Sente while cutting them? So let's see, we have uh, P2, O3, 2 interesting choices. Let's uh, take a look at both of them. Oh, and uh, Q, Q2, and P3, all interesting moves. Oh, Q3. <laughs> so it does. 
So uh, this move is too slow, I think. Um, the problem is that white can get a forcing move here, and black needs to respond, and then white can jump out here. And it still seems difficult to me that uh, black will manage to uh, make himself live in here. This is uh, not easy for black. A very, very difficult fight at best. Mm, the problem with this move is that white is still just going to go here. And black has to end in gote to uh, cut off the stones. And then white can still do this. So, same problem. Mm, this move, I fear, is just going to be cut off. This seems a difficult fight for black to win. Uh, this move, same idea. Probably just this move all over again. Seems a difficult fight for black. Well, he could p5 and then attach where? Attach to what? Ah, so q3 is actually the right move, but you don't need to play p5 first. You can save p5, because you don't want to damage o7 unnecessarily. So uh, Q3 is a great move here, because it gives you that critical, critical sente that you really want. And white responds here, and what is black's move now to uh, keep that sente that he so desperately wants? Yes, P4. Good. And that's the basic idea. And that's really something of the only way to, uh, or th the best way to uh, separate the stones in Sentai. Because white has to do something now. So white actually has a number of things that he can do. <laughs> so the fight actually gets very interesting from here. Um, white has a number of choices. What's the normal choice here? Yes, white to white to call Charlie Sheen, sure. But uh, what's the normal white response? A basic, simple, defensive response. P5 probably is not a basic, simple, defensive response, no. Yeah, Q5. No, Q5 is a very simple move. But uh, the problem is, and it looks like it might be good for black, or it, might, it looks like it might be good enough for white. But uh, the problem is there's uh, shape problems here. White can, uh, white is a Tessiji here. But uh, black actually has a uh, counter Tessiji. Can't black P2 verse? Ah, yes, yes, what is a Tessiji? Black actually has a counter Tessiji. This is why white didn't do this. was because black can play here. And if we see what happens, white can live. But very, very small. And the problem now is black has a Tessiji here. And because black can take Q1 in Sente whenever he wants, uh, there's not much that white can do here. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty beautiful. Um, and so this is why that I am nowhere close to a professional player, because I would never see something like this. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the moral of uh, why black or why white can't play that way. But white has a much more severe response instead of Q5. What is uh, what is white's far more <clears throat> Far more severe response. Yep. Q2. 
Yeah, Q2 is really severe. And it is, uh, he says that it is the uh, strongest play that uh, a white can make. Can't black just uh, connect now? Oh, you mean like uh, this? I uh, wouldn't recommend this, no. Well, yeah, that is black's response. Black's response actually is Q5. Oh, no, wait, no. Oh, no, no, no. He says black Q5 should have been black's response. But uh, he actually made his first mistake, his first real mistake of uh, the game here. This is uh, much too passive, apparently. He just takes this move because it uh, captures the stones. But uh, this move is what he should have done. Because uh, now the stones are captured. White can't cut. White uh, cannot cut here. And uh, black is uh, fairly satisfied that his uh, four stones are safer than they were. A modest mistake, but uh, an important one. Um, white can't immediately cut, but uh, there's potential later on. Uh, for example, Depending on what black does, there is this move potentially available, which uh, wasn't available previously. And so that's an annoyance that uh, black, right, black has to respond now, which is the difference between gote and sente. So black gets to capture the three stones, but uh, he basically lost himself sente, which is not a pretty thing to do especially at the, the highest levels of professional play. So uh, they get into a really interesting fight here. And uh, white uh, starts a vicious attack. So basically white's idea here now is uh, obviously to get his three stones out safely because uh, black's group Although Black's group looks really strong, in actuality, it only has one eye so far. Uh, so it's uh, it's not 100% alive. And White's going to try and take advantage of that to uh, attempt to ruin Black's right side. And that's basically the only chance that uh, Yi Cheng Hose has to uh, win the game. So he makes a pretty basic shape and uh, goes on the attack. And lo and behold, black makes us a G4 move, which was uh, pointed out earlier. Yes, the idea, of course, is uh, now that white has uh, set up this Aji here, this, uh, these forcing moves and this Aji that white has set up, or that uh, black set up earlier, allows uh, black to play G4. And because he can uh, break the ladder with the stone, it's difficult for white to respond aggressively to this move because his shape is a bit thin. White has no choice. <laughs> That's one of the many differences. But yes, move order is one of those critical skills. So this gives white a little bit uh, more in terms of potential for making an eye shape. And so now uh, he's trying to make a second eye here. He stole. But, uh, you know, most people say that uh, uh, Yi Chang Ho's style is uh, sometimes defensive. But uh, when he needs to be, he can be uh, just as vicious as anyone else when he wants to win. And uh, this is a move basically designed to make physically impossible any chance of black making an eye here. And you have to read very carefully with these kinds of moves. <laughs> you have to read very carefully. So uh, black goes to make it, uh, his stone weaker. And then he connects out here, threatening to uh, take the J2 stone. And uh, white defends with H with uh, F4, which is actually a really interesting defense, because uh, black can no longer cut the stone. It's uh, something of an indirect defense. If black tries this move, 
it doesn't work. Because uh, white can now run out like this. It's a good idea. So now black has to uh, come out this way to make himself a second eye. A uh, very important second eye. Uh, slowly strengthening himself. Now, this is uh, an important move. Uh, White had a lot of possibilities that he could have done, but uh, he chose R9 because uh, most of the other moves, uh, they, they might look like they're okay, but they don't really work that well. So if he does, for example, the basic move of uh, R7, this doesn't work because black has this pretty move. And then even if black goes uh, all, or even if white goes all out in an attempt to kill him, it uh, still doesn't work because uh, white's just not going to win this fight. Black, uh, or you know, white's just not going to win this fight. This shape is just too weak. There's no way white can win this out. I mean, even if black just plays very simple moves. Nothing complicated, oops, not there. Nothing complicated is needed to uh, win this fight. Yeah, no way. No way that white's going to win this. So white has no choice but to try and uh, pressure the R10 stone. But uh, black, of course, understands. Uh, Yusufel understands that he needs to live now. So he immediately uh, tanukis and takes R7 in an attempt to make a some eye shape. And then uh, white uh, continues on destroying black's uh, right side, or at least attempting to, with uh, Q10. And uh, they're having a Tanuki battle once again. And then Yisafil decides that he doesn't care, and uh, he just uh, basically takes uh, R13, willing to give him the stone. And white now plays something of a, uh, a slow move. He plays uh, R11, which is big, but, and it stabilizes his group, but uh, it gives Black too nice a result, uh, according to the yeast at all. The problem is that uh, he thinks that uh, White should have taken this move, because this is just such a gigantic move in terms of points, and that without this, uh, White probably can't win on uh, point total alone. <clears throat> so while this is very solid, the problem is that Black just goes here. And now white's corner is severely reduced, and black ends up living, basically. So white decides that uh, to win, he has to destroy black's corner. <laughs> white basically, uh, Yi uh, Chang-ho basically decides that uh, to win, he has to destroy the corner here. And this is a very good move to know. Um, black has a real, real struggle killing uh, this stone, if he tries. Black responds very solidly. If Black attempts something along these lines, uh, this doesn't really work as well. Because uh, this is just going to create a co. And this co is much too dangerous for Black. If, uh, if, yeah, if Black loses this co, uh, the game ends. I mean, the whole upper right quadrant of the board basically becomes whites if Black uh, fails to win this co. So he can't fight this co. Black has no choice but to do uh, R17. And so White then does uh, the bump test of G. And now this next response is interesting. The intuitive response that I think most uh, most amateur players would consider is, uh, what's the, the move the most uh, amateur players would consider as Black here? Yeah, O16 is the only move that occurred. would occur to me here. Apparently, O16, though, is a very bad move here. Because of a really fancy testigy, actually. So the reason why you can't do O16 here is because of this. Now, it looks like White's in some severe trouble. But uh, the problem is you get a squeeze play. And this is why you can't do that. And that's very pretty. Yeah, I know. 
which is why you can't play that way. So, uh, Yusito plays uh, more creatively. Yeah, he plays P16. Basically, he says that uh, if white wants to connect down and connect, if white wants to connect under, that's all well and good. But uh, black is just going to make himself uh, something in the center and uh, hopefully try and take Sensei. But white now uh, decides that he wants to uh, continue his attack or finish off his uh, attack on black stones. These two moves of whites were, you could almost consider Q17 and P17 as something of probing moves. They want to see what black's intentions were. And so now he's going to take some 100% uh, Sente moves that uh, Black absolutely cannot uh, fail to respond to. So Black really has no choice but to play this way. And then uh, White uh, connects himself out. And Black decides that he's going to continue his attack and basically start a counterattack on White's center stones. Now, White played uh, 018 because he absolutely had to, to keep up on points. But as a consequence, he left his center group kind of thin. So uh, Isato is basically going to try and take advantage of the fact that he left it so thin. So, uh, oh, this is an interesting point. Uh, White plays is something of a subtle move here that's uh, important, but that a lot of players miss. What is, uh, what is White's move here? It's just a, a small thing that White does. Yes. S12 is a very, very important move. Even though it's immediately going to be captured, it is very, very powerful. Black, of course, can cut and capture it, but uh, what does that allow white to do? Yeah, keep them separated in sente. Move order. Without that move, it would uh, not be possible. So, for example, if white just connected up here, black's just going to play S12. And then if white plays T10, black just doesn't care at all. Yep, no more sente. Or if we do the opposite, if white attempts this, and uh, you know black could just play here, and this is maybe not as bad as the other way, but uh, white basically lost himself a free move. White made himself stronger in uh, the previous situation because he managed to get Q Q11. Without uh, Q11, his center group is a fair amount weaker. So another very, very important little move order tweak. So basically, one-way sequence. Not really any uh, variation here. And suddenly, white needs to figure out how to make his group live. So white does just that. Uh, black cuts them in half. And they start fighting. Black uh, protects his cutting points. White threatens to uh, connect up. Black goes to slice his shape. This is a really huge move, by the way. Not only does it threaten uh, the cut at uh, P12, but it also threatens the other cut at uh, N9. So first, White takes a forcing move and then connects himself. Now, this next Black move is important. Uh, Yusatol's move was uh, actually uh, N9. And he says that uh, because he was winning, he says that uh, a very, very simple move that just gains points like this is uh, acceptable right now. But were the game, were he scared that he was losing or were the game much closer, he would actually play this move. This move has uh, a lot of vicious, vicious, vicious potential to it. And is very, very complicated for both sides. Um, not only, of course, is it threatening to cut, but it also threatens a co. You know, if uh, if white just defends simply, later on in the game, black might decide that uh, he wants to start a gigantic, massive co for uh, the entire corner. So this is very complicated, though. And uh, Yusuto basically uh, was thinking that uh, he didn't need to play this way in the game because he saw himself winning without this move. So, because he was winning, he uh, played this move. But, you know, I, I want to caution everyone against uh, playing, you know, overly passive moves just because you're winning. To do it properly takes incredibly accurate judgment. I cannot tell you the number of times that I have thought, oh, I'm winning the game, I don't need to play this aggressive move, I can just defend. And then the game comes to a conclusion and I lose by a point and a half. 
and it's just incredibly frustrating. You know, you, you really, really, really need to be cautious anytime you decide to purposefully play a more defensive move. So White decides that uh, he's going to make one last uh, ditch effort to uh, keep up on points with uh, Q16. And this is a very interesting sequence. Uh, White decides to cut here first because he, wanna make, he wants to uh, make sure that uh, Black's only response is uh, when he cuts here. He wants to make it heavier for Black. See, had uh, had uh, White just done this, it had White attempted to play R15 later in the game. There's no way Black's going to play uh, S15 here. Black can uh, potentially respond pretty viciously, uh, just right here. So this is another uh, minor move order tweak. By playing it first, he got White to, he got Black to play the S15 move, and made it a little bit heavier for him to uh, Tanuki. So Black then uh, goes on to take his uh, Sente moves. Why not Q14 then? Q14 when? Now or what? Instead of S15. Oh! This leaves a fair amount more Aji. Um, without that extra stun in there. Because it uh, allows White to do this immediately. And after this, Black still needs to spend another move defending. It's another uh, small move order tweak. But the idea being here is that uh, Black won't play this anymore because that would have made uh, S15 silly. <laughs> they wouldn't. So, basically, endgame starts now. And uh, there's another, the game goes on for another 100 moves or so. But uh, basically, uh, Izithil says that uh, from here, there's really not much that White can do to catch up unless uh, Black makes Yosei mistakes. And uh, the game is basically over. Uh, 100 moves later, uh, when there's nothing of Yosei of any importance left, uh, Yicheng-ho uh, resigns the game. And this lets uh, Yusitol go up to a 2-1 lead in uh, the 7th LG Cup, which he ends up winning. And uh, really uh, cemented his place at the time as uh, one of the top up-and-coming pros. But, uh, so yeah, this is uh, basically where uh, this particular review of this game will end. Um, there's a lot more detail that we could go in on just about any part of the game. Uh, he provides countless variations. And to fit everything that he put in there in an hour and a half lecture is uh, pretty difficult, but uh, <laughs> but it, it's a really fascinating book, and I really enjoyed it. It's an enjoyable book, because uh, you get to see his own thoughts on uh, his own moves. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this game, and uh, hopefully we all learn something from it. And uh, you know, someday maybe one of us will be able to play moves even vaguely close to theirs. But uh, I'm not uh, holding my breath for myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will uh, see you all next time. Hope you enjoyed it.